Hello, good afternoon, welcome to More Than A Game. We're going to be discussing uh, Richard Masters, the Premier League CEO, speaking out today uh, in relation to Everton and Nottingham Forest being um, in breach of PSR. Well, we'll you know, that's what, the, that's what the shame. We'll also be looking at uh, the transfer market at the moment, who's been linked with who. But before we start it all, Jose Mourinho has uh, left Roma today, teary-eyed. Jose Mourinho, the fans turned up to give him a farewell. He's been replaced by Daniel De Rossi uh, as the manager. Roma legend. Um, two and a half years, won them the Europa Conference League. Mm. Didn't he want a trophy? They haven't been going great this season, um, truth be told. But he has left. He has left there. So, I mean, what's your... What's your take on that? Um, yeah, I mean, he, he does normally just do three years. Still, <laughs> yeah, he? yeah. Um, they were beaten by Milan at the weekend, three mm. one. Uh, ninth in the in Serie A, won eight, drawn five, lost seven. Mm. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He just he maybe only just, five points off a of Champions League play. No, I know, but. Maybe they, maybe they just thought this was the time. The, mm. the Rossi obviously is a legend, and they maybe thought that this is the time to, to you know, I don't know. Maybe Mourinho had stopped working, working as hard as maybe he once was. You know what he's like? He gets agitated and yeah. he starts speaking out. Even his tweet, he just put a picture of him lifting the trophy. You know, afterwards. Mm. Um, so. It might be just the right time for everybody, as I said. He, he normally goes in three years, and they're a funny, funny club, Roma. They mm. are a funny club. They, they should be, they should be like I don't know. They should be huge, but they're not huge. They're just they're one of those clubs who just who, they're not really, not really Italian like royalty when it comes to the when it comes mm. to the. There's obviously Juve and the two Milan clubs, and they're just somewhere underneath, just a little bit underneath. And mm. there's always that huge pressure. It is the capital. Um, you know the, the three places behind Lazio as well. You obviously are seen as the second club in the city, yeah. and it's just it, there is a huge, huge pressure, and and it's it can be it can be really difficult for because no one's really, no one's really managed to crack them. You know, mm. um, you know, they, I think they they won the they won the league the early early two thousands. And and they've had you know bits and pieces of 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 silverware since, but no one can really crack them. And no. there is there is a ridiculous amount of pressure on, on on anyone who goes there. And even with bringing Lukaku in on loan, they just you know they were dealt a huge ball with Tammy Abraham's injury. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But no one seems to be able to crack it. And he's, he's paid the price. Paid the price. It won one hundred and thirty eight games. He managed Roma for sixty eight victories, thirty nine games lost, uh, two hundred and fourteen goals scored, one hundred and forty three conceded. He had a forty nine percent win rate with Roma across all competitions. He finished sixth in Serie A and won the Conference League in his first season. He finished sixth in Serie A last year and was runners up in the Europa League final. Lost on penalties, didn't he? And um, they are ninth, but the twenty-two points behind Milan, aren't they? Uh, behind Inter, rather, um, at the top. And they recently went out of the Coppa Italia to Lazio, um, and he got sent off in that one as well, didn't he? So it's been an eventful two and a half years, <coughs> but he does leave with another trophy. Yeah, and he could have ended. Well, but like I said, he was a penalty shootout away from having two European trophies in two years, and of mm-hmm. course he would have then been in the Champions League, wouldn't he? This season with that, um, and that, and to be honest, I mean, you know, again, people might look down on that trophy, but for 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 a for someone like like Roma, I think that that's a that is actually a big a, a big trophy. It's a huge As trophy. I said, didn't, didn't, no, like. You know, they've only had, they've only ever won the league three times, and the last mm. time was in the early two thousands. You know they've won a, they've won. Um, it was with Totti, wasn't it? Yeah, Totti was the cat. Totti did. Sure. Oh, Proudly no. behind you. That's why I brought it in. I think. Like why you brought it in? It, I was just looking. Sorry, it was so in my eye. Why you brought? No, why it. I brought that? Not the shirt. You brought. Why oh. I brought it into the conversation? Because oh, okay. it's right behind. Didn't sound like that. No, no. Why you brought the shot? Yeah, you yeah. brought the Totti shirt. Yeah. I meant because it was right behind yeah. you. But um, they're not. They're not a yeah. huge. As I said, I think we mm. sometimes they're not a huge, huge team. 
uh, you know, I, don't call them a small club. They're not a small club. Street. They're very much not a small don't club. Don't call them But they're, they're not a they're not a massive they're not a they're not a massively um, massively big club when it comes to winning trophies. Mm. That's what I will say. Okay, fair enough. Uh, make sure you like the and subscribe. The Italian is their big trophy, by the way. They've won it nine times. So. And subscribe uh, here so it's as a well. well. Is, uh, no, it's a big thing. And to go out to Lazio as well, obviously, is a, is a bit of a big deal, isn't it? Without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but like you say, leaves with a trophy. 49% win ratio. It's not too bad at all. Um, and we'll, we'll see where he ends up next uh, in the grand scheme of things, but um, the Roma... Do you think he's got another big job in him, or do you think he's just sliding more and more down well, to the point where he might become, say, an international manager, or he might he, end up in he, Saudi? He could well be in... An, uh, Saudi, I think he's still got more to offer than Saudi. I think he's... Someone like Everton, that kind of club, don't mean Everton now, but I mean that kind of club where they're, a, they're kind of a... a sleeping giant is the right phrase but you know what I mean a club there that where he can get everyone against so everyone's against us and we'll battle back mm. that type of job whatever country that is in yeah. whether it be Spain again or whether it be England or whether it be it's another yeah, Serie A job a little bit but too much noise no he does but that's the only the thing with him is, is the drama because he's never most managers aren't happy but he Sort of the way Rafa Benitez does it, he only oh, he's a much better version of it. He will yeah. often cause fractions, won't he? Because he wants everything in his corner. Um, but you might be right, maybe Portugal's the right after the Euros is the right thing for him. He's not getting that job. But he won't get it, will he? Roberto. He's got, yeah. We're Roberto. We're gonna keep it what, what about, like, all right, so what about Newcastle? Yeah, not, I mean, it's not. I, I think Newcastle might want a little bit of a sexier manager, as in the way they play. But he could be one that could break their trophy. Though, by they've got good, you know, good players there. They'll have money. Well, <laughs> if they sell one of the players, they might have money to spend with these rules the way they are. Um, he could be because obviously Eddie yeah, Howe is under. No matter which way you cut it, he's under pressure. They're not performing. Um, they got themselves into a great. Not blaming them for losing against Man City, by the way, but they got themselves in a good position there. But you can't move away from isn't it something like they've lost seven of the last nine or something they're mm. in a they're in a sticky spell at the moment I'm not trying to get him sacked no no that, that, that would he be... could be but I don't I just don't know I think I don't know whether Newcastle would think they can get better than him but I don't know but I don't know the Roma statement said we'd like to thank Jose on behalf of all of us at AS Roma for his passion and efforts since his arrival at the club we will always have great memories of his tenure at Roma but we believe an immediate change is in the best interest of the club we wish Jose and his assistants all the best for his future endeavours um, yeah I think maybe it... I mean he was linked with the return to Real Madrid but Carlo signed a three year deal so he ain't going anywhere I just wonder whether it's <clears throat> sometimes it can just be a timing thing as well, can't it? Hmm? In terms of um you know, they might just think it's the right time to put someone like the Rossi in. Cause hmm? again, I'd I think they're another club that there's a lot of young managers coming into the coming into the game now and um maybe they just think the Rossi coming in I know it's to the end of the season, but that might with him being with him being a club legend, like he's he's like secondary to Totti, mm. certainly in the modern era. Mm. Maybe they'll think that having him in, in <laughs> and giving him an opportunity over the end end of the season that's just that's just good timing. Mm. Um, although he's only I think he's only uh, only managed that's one other club. He was in Serie B with the uh, with Spal, um, but he only lasted about five months, I think. So. Um, it'll be interesting it will be interesting to see what happens it will uh, on to obviously Richard Masters has appeared today and um, been questioned by some MPs and yeah, other Commons people committee. in the committee yeah um, this comes the day after Everton and Nottingham Forest have learned that they will be um, or they have breached in the Premier League's opinion breached the PSR rules for Everton, it's a second year on the run. Uh, I think people who've got a handle of this will say, well, they were always going to breach it because the two years is included from last year again in this year. Um, 
and with no real opportunity to be able to fix it other than the the passage of time. That's where Everton are. Um, from Nottingham Forest perspective, I guess this is not really a huge surprise given how they've gone about the business since they got promoted. Mm. But a lot of players trying to trying to stay up and, and develop the club in a different way. I'm not going to change my opinion on either. I think to even quote a points deduction for stuff like this, I think is a nonsense. I think the Premier League have got themselves in a hole. They, they wrote laws when Portsmouth went into administration all those years ago that aren't fit for purpose today. The whole point of PSR is to protect the club mm. from going out of business, make it sustainable, and yet here they are taking points off clubs and putting clubs' Premier League existence at, um, at risk. And the way they do things are crazy. You know, the 105 million, while I've said it before, it's a joke that anyone should be allowed to lose money. It's a real thing. And only three clubs, I think, post a profit anyway. So every club loses money. Manchester United are over a billion pound in debt. Uh, Spurs, apparently 800 million in debt, but I don't know how accurate that is. These are just numbers I've seen flying around. Um, But it, it just seems a little bit, Mad these rules, and we know that the rules are actually changing in the summer as well. Again, but Masters didn't Masters say it's not actually going to change this summer? I'm sure he said they were going to stay in place for next year. Did he? he yeah, I'm sure. And Ned, do me a favor. I've just sent you a clip there. Can you? It's the whole thing. Can you go and have a listen to it and cut the seven 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 bit out and that bit out for me? Um. There's a yeah. I'm sure he said they were gonna. They were, they were. He didn't say they were changing. He said there was going to be a meeting, and I'm sure he said uh, they they they'll be certainly in place for certainly in these ones will still be in place next year. Okay, but it might just be the wording. Hmm. But they are changing. Yeah, there's and no, they are there's changing. No, there's no thing about it. But I think I've said this before. I don't think any football. Listen, people will say, well, you've got a vested interest, but I just mean in general anyway. I don't. I don't agree with points deductions for any football club. I was fuming when Derby County were given their points deduction. The same with Wigan. The same with Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. I just don't think he should be... It, it should be a merit-based thing. I, I just can't get... PSR, it. I understand. And I understand the. I understand both arguments for it. And I understand the argument where it's almost like they are... It's protecting football clubs from themselves. Mm. I understand that argument. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be rules in I place. The, I, get I get the arg. I don't think. I don't think these ones are fit for purpose. Mm. But I do understand football clubs almost being like you know you need you need you need someone to stop you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Doing, you know because there is the argument of what if Farhad Mashiri or what if the Nottingham Forest owner was allowed to just keep going and mm. keep going and keep going Newcastle. because they already know. No, I think Newcastle's different. Than, than those two arguments because no, they, I meant for like just wanting got, to spend money. No, they've they got money the to spend and they can't. Have got money to spend, mm. but the point being is someone was clearly saying someone clearly has said to Farad Mashiri and the Forest owner, mm. you know you need to stop here, don't you? And they're like, no, 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 we'll just keep going. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. The Premier League, yeah, now, yeah, go on. Now, so they they keep going and they keep going. Now this is a way of saying. You need to stop, mm. slap you on the wrist. Yeah. You need to stop for your own sake. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, Portsmouth did do this and they kept on going and thought, they kept on gambling. They kept yeah, on trying to win the money did. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, but, the point, but the point being is, the points thing is, it's just that for me, in a league that works the way the Premier League does, where the drop off going to being relegated is so huge, that the money you would lose by going out to the Premier League will, will just destroy you as a football club anyway. Mm. It will literally... If your football club's not fit for purpose and isn't it doesn't work right, how's it going to work right with you drop into the Championship? And I just... I believe that at every level with the points thing. It only hurts the fan base. I mean, we sit here as Everton fans and we know everyone who caused this problem has, has basically gone yeah. or is basically has got half of you know there's a half a foot still left in the door holding it for the next people who just se can't seem to get through the door mm. certainly at Everton. so we know they're the cause of it but they've all gone they've all gone they've all left so the people who are gonna who suffer the consequences and this ha is what happens at every club are the fans mm. the fans suffered the consequences 
they did. Everton fans weren't part of it. Everton fans told the world what has been going. Everton fans have been telling the world what's been going on for the last th three years mm. or so. Some, some even more. Some longer than that when it was somebody else's fault. So it's not like the Everton fans haven't been telling telling people. So points are. And you could say the same for Reading fans. You could say the same for Derby fans. You could say the same for Wigan fans. You could say the same for, you know, Belly fans. Sheffield Wednesday. All these fans of clubs who have been screaming for help and have been screaming at the people in charge to look at their clubs and mm. ask why they, why they, why these people pass fit and proper uh, ownership test, test yeah. and all this. And they are ignored because they're fans. And guess what? Guess who will pay the price? The fans. The fans will pay the price. And people can go, people can sit there in the Ivy Towers or or journalists can sit there and go, well, you broke the rules. It's like, we didn't break the rules. We're the fans. Mm -hmm. We sat there and we told you, you didn't want to write stories about it. All you no. wanted to do was sit there and talk about what Klopp had had for his breakfast or, you know, mm -hmm. or what moisturizer Pep uses on his bald head. Mm -hmm. You know, that's because that's all you care about. Mm -hmm. And Masters today has played, played his part in that by calling certain clubs small mm. so it's played his part in that today yeah it is a it's a mad one um, like I said I, I don't see it being fit for purpose I think the rules PSR rules <laughs> are a joke but I will never ever advocate no matter what club it's for um, for points deductions ever mm. because we there's very little left for supporters unless you are Man City fans or whatever mm. that you go to game and they took goal celebrations off us to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Things are, you know, we were in a stadium the other day where it took five minutes to get to an offside decision that anyone whose eyes were working could have seen within 11 seconds. Um, we've got that coming into it. We've got red cards being issued when there's nothing in a tackle. Mm -hmm. it, you know, we're already, again, unless you're one of the two or three, four clubs maybe, you fight, you're swimming up upstream anyway, trying to, to compete in this league. Mm. They've created the league within a the league. They've created the Super League because of the rewards, putting people on TV more than anyone else, giving them that kicker. It, it's already so stacked against 14 clubs. It's mm. untrue. And even, to be honest with you, it's, you know, teams like Spurs do all right. But it's stacked against them as well, really. Mm. You know, they have to try to do it slightly different. Liverpool have done a great job of doing it a different way. Arsenal have done a bit of both. City are obviously the best team around and you're all battling for that. United have spectacularly cocked it up despite having all the resources and being over a billion in debt to still create a hell of a lot of money, which means they don't fail PSR rules. Chelsea are the same. You're already such a difficult thing to do is to compete in this league. And when you've got rules that are so stringent and so put in place to damage you that to then take points off teams I think is just astonishing I really do yeah I mean everyone has their own challenges I mean you mentioned Spurs there mm. what have Spurs actually got out of it do you know what I mean they've been don't get me wrong they've been very prudent and they've been uh, Levy runs a tight ship and they've managed to build a stadium they haven't won anything Got the Champions League. They haven't failed PSR either, though, have they? Was, 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 do we get a trophy for that now? No, but that's what... No, no, but that's Yeah, but point. if you look at the reporting and the stories... It, no, no, but... It's coming to that. We, you said it yourself. They'll have a, a countdown clock yes. onto decisions now but about it, isn't whether you've failed do or we get a, do we get a mm. Do we get a trophy mm. for, for not failing PSR? No, no. You know, Tottenham haven't won anything. They've got a lovely stadium, and don't get me wrong, that will help facilitate mm. them in the next 100 years. But they haven't won anything. Mm. They've just been, and everyone, everyone says, uh, look, you know, there's been jokes going around for years about, well, oh, Spurs have won the net spend mm. trophy of the year and all this. But that's the point, isn't it? Is that football clubs are existing for the sake of existing. Yeah. yeah. You know, the sake of making money, mm. for the sake of people turning up on a Saturday, enjoying the day and going home, but never having that true experience of what a football fan is which is trying to push the club to the limits of winning something. Mm. You know, Liverpool, Liverpool are sort of, do, I've done it a different way, but at the same time, they have a, they already have an inbuilt fan base because of what they did. And they're a huge brand. Because of what they? they did in the 70s and the 80s. Mm. These people have took that on, created a huge brand, you know, built half a stadium. Mm. 
And I have no doubt that they'll build another half of a stadium mm. to, 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 to make them... To, to keep the growth to keep going. The, yeah, to keep mm. that growth going. You know, They had a huge name even last night. John Oliver won an award uh, uh, at the, the Emmys and he started, as it, for his expect, uh, acceptance. acceptance speech, he started reading out the Liverpool squad. <laughs> I was just like, mm. these things don't happen to other clubs, do mm. they? Um, they seem to have planted fans in certain areas of the media, haven't they, all over the world, so just to keep them highlighted mm. now and again. So they're a huge brand, of course, like Manchester United are, and the rest of us are just like feeding off scraps, aren't they? And, that's where we are. That's where we are. But we have to. I think. I think certainly, Forest is Forest is really interesting, isn't it? It's a really interesting one. They came up, and they've tried to stay up, mm-hmm. and they have gone mad. Yeah, and obviously they're trying to claim Brendan Johnson thing, which yeah. is quite. Don't get me wrong; it's quite an interesting defense. On the and I'm not because I'm certainly wouldn't say it's. Oh, you wouldn't laugh at them because, but it's an interesting defense to say that they could have sold Brendan Johnson in the time allotted, basically the time allotted, mm-hmm. like it's a bleeding, game yeah, show. yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's a yeah. game show. But the offers were lower than what his value was, and when they sold them, it was outside and they got what they thought his value was worth. Yeah, I think that's an interesting thing. Again, that talks about that talks about the that's another thing where when we say you cheated or when we say. Uh, you did something wrong or you failed PSR. There are reasons for that. There are absolute reasons for that. Uh, John Blaine's going to come in in a moment and make yeah, me look yeah. stupid. But there are reasons for that. You know, it's dead easy to say, well, you should have sold X, Y, and Z. But what if there's no market for X, Y, and Z? Of course. Yeah. What if at that moment, no one wants your player? And Brand- Brand- Forrest, in their defence, had every right to say, no, we're not going to sell this player. Just because we come under your imaginary thing, mm. so and when they did get the value, it was outside this window. And they are the things that I find very frustrating with these things. Where surely, if you've got a plane he's worth eighty million, with Charleston, you should sell him for eighty million. Not when this predetermined um, imaginary line is. Mm. There. But John will say something completely different. Make me look stupid now. Go ahead, John. Go ahead, John. Club <laughs> trying to influence what I'm going to say. Um, the question when I put my hand up, the question was going to be Do you think that what you've just described Nottingham Forest did, which was fundamentally sell a player a couple of months later than the Premier League might have wanted them mm. to, was cheating? Because I don't, no, 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 I don't. Football, I don't. That's that's the because the what we've got here is owners of football clubs are not allowed to spend their own money, yeah beyond whatever it is, 30 million a year they can contribute because the Premier League say so. Now, clearly that's seeking to mitigate the potential for a Middle Eastern owner to spend a billion in a transfer window, for example. But one size does not fit all, Mm. does it? No, no. If you set a limit on what you're allowed to do, equal to turnover or, or whatever, then at least everyone who's got... You know, an owner who's prepared to put the money where the mouth is, and certainly haven't had one of those, and it and still do at the moment. And clearly, Nottingham Forest have one because he must be funding it all ultimately. Yeah. Mm. But not only do they want to stop you from putting money into your own business, they want to tell you when you, how and when you sh- should sell one of your prized yeah. assets. Yeah. Well, they told Everton. Yeah. And, they had, yeah. Before... and Everton did what they said. And, and still, still failed their yeah. rules. Yeah. Maybe had we waited a couple of months, we sorry, I'm an Everton fan. If we'd waited a couple of months and mm. sold Richarlison or whoever for a bit more money, we wouldn't have breached their goddamn rules. Well, that's it, and that's that's a good. It's like referees telling you when to take goal kicks. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Having yeah. a go at uh, you know, Sheffield it's, United it's, for the way they were playing. No, it? and I so I do have. It, it's an interesting defence, and I'm whether that covers the rest of the money that he spends. Well, I. Well, whatever, I'm, I don't know the ins and outs of Forest, but I do think, again, it's a system where it's like a system that is trying to undermine. Um, but can I offer a contrary view? Go on, go on. Uh, to my own view, we, we talk often about the sporting side, and this is all about sporting sanctions, which are inappropriate, unjust, whatever, right? Um, p- i.e. penalty deduction, uh, uh, penalty uh, points deductions. Points deductions, yeah, yeah. That's too much coffee, right? But if you want what we always say, 
in the live game with refereeing decisions, VI and, and so on, is we want consistency, mm. right? The KC in the case that listens to that mitigation from Nottingham Forest surely has to conclude that was a management decision that you made you're still in breach of the rules because you didn't satisfy the rules by the, you know, the end of the financial t period. Even though the rest of us, to use the sporting analogy, that's clearly offside. What are they wasting four minutes for? Mm. And I know you use the same phrase often, but I'm going to use it again, right? Is these people do not know the difference between doing things right and doing the right thing. And I mean these people, the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Nottingham Forest, according to the rules, have not done things right, but they've done the right thing. Mm. And they should get some credit for doing the right thing. Yeah. If that mitigation is allowed for Nottingham Forest, and maybe that's after Everton's decision has already been made, mm. you now find yourself in a situation where Everton might choose to cry foul due to the inconsistencies, mm. yeah? And just like Howard Webb and others all Everton would get was a, sorry, mm. Mm, yeah, yeah, Forrest has happened now, but you've already had your 50-point deduction, sorry. So they need to get a grip. But I don't, I, again, I'll, I will reiterate. But Forrest, I'm with you, Ped, you know, they've done the right thing for their business. Right? I will the reiterate. They could for Brennan Johnson. will reiterate it again. It's Forrest shouldn't be getting a points deduction. Either. Nobody should. It's not, it's not a, a fair and proper way to, to punish Spot teams. on. It's absolute joke. I just, just, but I just think that that is like the crux of it, though, isn't mm. it? Telling somebody when they have to sell their uh, their biggest asset. Mm. That's not how football works. No. You know, you, we are already waiting for for the bigger fish to come along. Let's just say and swallow are, yeah. up. We want the value for them. Mm. You know, when Everton sell Onana or they sell Jared Brantwaite. It has to be for what we believe yep. is their mark of value, mm -hmm. not the value that is put on them by a invisible um, line mm -hmm. that says if you don't sell by this thing, you will this won't go in your books this year. And because football clubs, like anything else, will prey on that. Spurs preyed on Richarl the Richarlison sale. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe man, maybe whoever come in for Brandon Johnson was it Man City who came in for him? I'm not sure, but someone came in for Brandon Johnson and what? Brennan. Brennan. It's, it's what? No, his name Brandon. I'm not having that. I don't care what his Johnson. Mother, not don't care what his mother called him. Funnily enough, I was talking about David Johnson no. the other day. He was on yeah, Aldi, yeah. and that's but, his son. But someone isn't came it? in for him and probably thought who had a little bit of an inkling that they might have to sell before uh, mm. this line, and went, we'll we'll offer up a we'll offer up a, a number that. They mightn't like, but they will have to take. Mm -hmm. And they said no. It may have come back to bite them on the arse, but that's amazing. How again? How how have we got ourselves in a situation where you where the the clubs that are higher in the league, not the bigger clubs, the league, the ones that are just higher in the league, that can come along and go, we'll have him for cheap. That distorts it again because the only chance we've got as a club at the moment, you know. Someone put out there yesterday or today saying the examples are, I think it was John Cross. The examples are, look at Brighton. Look at, oh, look at Brighton. Brighton are amazing. Yeah, they are amazing. But they still, they still, if they had this imaginary line because they were in trouble, let's say at the very beginning, they wouldn't have got a hundred odd million for Casado because some, Chelsea would have come in and gone, I'll give you 75 for them. And that's, Top, sure. that's it. Because and the you, Premier you League don't sell them by here. Yeah. And also on the flip side of that, if we didn't have this ridiculous system anyway, Chelsea wouldn't be allowed to spend that, that stupid money that keeps Chelsea that keeps Brighton afloat. The whole thing is topsy tip. Go on, John. No, no, I, I, you've you've covered much of it because you, you talk about an imaginary line, and they're doing this about accounting periods. We talk about the Premier League is very much about marketeers and accountants and lawyers, not about footballers and football mm -hmm. clubs, right? But if you if your imaginary line was at the beginning or the end of a transfer window, it would make far more sense, wouldn't it, right? So that's the first thing. But look where Everton found themselves, and they took a different fork in the road to Nottingham Forest, right? They went the trying to keep the Premier League happy way and got shafted. But we sold our asset, if you like, Richarlison, 
to the deadline they set against perhaps the hardest negotiator amongst Premier League clubs, Daniel Levy, right? And emphatically, whatever he paid, he knew it was less than he would have had to pay if we weren't backed into a corner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, the only good. debate is how much more we would have got, not whether we would have got more at all. Of course. And as we all know, we only needed to get £19.5 million more and we wouldn't have failed the goddamn mm. thing anyway. So as Everton fans, well in, Forrest. You've done what's right for your but club. But they could have got more. Well, without this align, they could have got more, and and that's the way, that's where we are. Absolutely, uh, but they the got a bit more than they would have done. Yeah. yeah, on the back of that, obviously, what's your take just briefly on them? Masters calling Everton and nothing for us small clubs. I know we didn't kind of go Everton and Forest, but he but he did. He, he said it without show me. You think the small clubs without telling me the small. You know what I mean? Well, he said it though, didn't he? He's mm. called he's called clubs in the Premier League small mm. and. Every club is supposed to be equal, regardless mm. of what their turnover is. Every club is supposed to be equal, and um, again, that highlights the the bias. I think mm. whether he's aware of it or not, there is definitely a bias if you're calling clubs smaller. If, that, if that's make, so if you're making decisions, if that's where you where you start from, then we've got a problem already. We we need the Premier League needs someone at the top who who views. Luton Town as um, as much as a important club as Manchester City because in terms of voting they are just as important mm. you know and how can how can you look at it and think how can you look at it and think well they're smaller clubs it just it reflects badly on him as as the the, the guy running it. Mm. I I think personally, I just well, like, does, and of it? course people go, well, there are bigger clubs or there are smaller clubs. Well, of course there are. Of course, in the on, in terms of trophies, we we've, we've always had a hierarchy in terms of money. There is a hierarchy, but for him to say it in terms of, it's, yeah, I think it just tells you everything you need to know about about how it's running, um, and what what the priorities are. I mean the rules. We're going to move on from this now, but the rules are crazy the way they are. We've got, you know, Newcastle are uh, considering selling Alexander Isaac to stay on the right side mm -hmm. of the, the PSR rules. And also Bruno Gomez. And yeah. they're two of their better players, aren't they? Um, Newcastle are out of the race for Calvin Phillips because they can't do it with the PSR mm -hmm. stuff. So it's affecting a team that... and, and Obviously, well, they, there was news today that Joe Linton is expected to miss the whole season now with the injury. So they would have wanted to replace him, but they can't because of the way the current. Don't get me, and, and that's a club with a lot of money. And 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 Richard Masters facilitated Newcastle's takeover. Um, mm. You know, and I, but no one said. There's this argument again where it's like I'm reading bits of journalists who have obviously got who obviously. Have great influence, and they're going on Sky, at, you know, on their on their shows and stuff, at, and and putting it across, and they they they're talking about well, this PSR was so that number one, you you did have it does aid competitiveness because it means Newcastle and no, Man City can't spend all that money. You know, I understand that. I understand having trying to trying to um, set a bar, but it, but it doesn't. This particular version of it does not work. Number one, I mean. I think it's been highlighted that the, the figure's 10 years old. Money doesn't stand still. You know, how much did the Freddo cost 10 years ago? <laughs> you know, compared to now. Um, we've we've got, a, we've got a system that doesn't work. I understand why we've got a system and we do need a system, but this system doesn't work. And they know that. It is changing. But it's changing after you've already punished a couple of teams and one of those teams you're going to do them twice. If you know a system doesn't work, how on earth can you punish teams under that system then? Mm. You know, that's that's Crazy. ridiculous. No, I agree. I totally agree. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Uh, we're trying to grow this channel, so come on, give us your support. Uh, Bob Pendleton says, we've mentioned client journalists over the past couple of days. Why can't the club challenge the Premier League on confidentiality and GDPR information? I think John mentioned that the breaking of this confidentiality could cl cost the clubs millions especially when dealing with Daniel Levy at Spurs. So. Well, that confidentiality has been broken because when media have got 
things like Everton need to sell by this thing, and that's come from the or they'll fail the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Well, who's selling them that? Everton aren't selling them that, are they? So someone at the Premier League's tipping was tipping Daniel Levy off. Someone at the Premier League was tipping clubs off about Brennan Johnson. Forrester needing to do this sale. People, we know that people were tipping, or was it Mendes, to keep mm-hmm. Wolves on that line? You know, Wolves literally have scraped by, apparently. Because mm-hmm. they got rid of all the players and got things like 40-odd million for Ruben Neves. This, this is the other side of it, though. All the clubs to, are known. Listening to Jay, let's talk about, you know, how are the rules fair? I mean, why are people like... You know, again, like like Sir John Cross saying things like, "Well, if Forest, uh, sorry, if Palace and Wolves have had to sell players and comply, then what makes you so special? Have you not seen who we've sold? Mm. Like it's he's this an thing. idiot, though, isn't no, he? No, but this is another argument that the journalists, mm. uh, some journalists who have co- have obviously been briefed by the Premier League, clearly more than others because they get they knew this was happening ages mm. before. But it's this idea that that like Forest." I've already sold you, that's their defence, Brendan Johnson, mm. but they wanted a fair price. Certainly, Everton have sold players. Why didn't you sell Probably players? Done. We sold Andy Gordon and never brought anyone in last January mm. when we were in a terrible position. Mm. We sold Richarlison. We've sold players before that. Mm. We've let players leave our leave our leave leave the club. What have there we spent this... in the summer? Exactly. We hardly bought anybody this there are ex- There are other circumstances. Mm. But this idea of you didn't do your bit, you've just mm. cheated. It's like, what are you talking about? We have sold players, and then you get the arguments of, like we spoke about. Well, you sold this person, and then you 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 went and bought a replacement. Yes, because you need eleven players to mm. play football, mate. Mm. You need a squad. But if you do it in a way that is like certainly like like Beto, no down payment, mm. no down payments, mm. and then the rest of it will be paid over five years. Mm. You know, Onana. Will be paid paid over the course of his contract. Of course, you know, White McNeil was paid. Will be paid over the five years. It just it's terrifying that these fellas are given a platform when they haven't got all the information. That's what the problem is. They've got or they have got information and they don't they don't use it because it's amazing how stupid they are. They can't be John Cross can't be stupid. He just can't be. But yeah, he acts like he's stupid, which is terrifying. Uh, anyway, that's that's where we are. But what about the situation where they were at, he was asked about Manchester City mm. and said they've got a date to yeah. reveal it? Well, mm. what, what's going on here? You know, this is why people want an independent regulator yeah. because the so the Premier League should be transparent, surely. The Premier League, the guardian of our game, mm. the people who were in the people who were you know, you know, I know we've got the FA, but these are these these are running the game in this country, aren't they? Let's be honest. Mm. Um, you know they make the big decisions. They're making the decision whether to help the EFL with the TV rights or not. That's up to them, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we've well, we know when we're we're gonna we're, we're, tell us then. Hmm? If it's tra- you know if you are transparent, tell us when that's gonna be. Everyone wants to know. Hundred and fifteen breaches. Yes, it might be different than Everton's. It might be different than Forest, but no one cares. Mm-hmm. That's that, that's by the by. Everybody in this country wants to know when Manchester City are going to have their day in court. Yeah, yeah. Because it's dragging on. It's absolutely dragging on this now. And you've got a date, but you won't tell it. Why won't you tell anyone? Is that because that might... If you don't tell anyone this season, if you tell everyone, sorry, this season, but it but it doesn't happen till after the season, does that mean that whatever happens in the title race now is would be sort of not up in the air, but people will ask questions again. Is this se- is it legitimate this season? Because that's all that'll happen if mm-hmm. you say theirs isn't until after this season, then people will go, So they're gonna win another so if they win another league title, that's one they've won now. Yeah. Because if it happens now and they got a punishment handed down to them, that would probably they would con- you know, they would concur issues this season if that's what we're if that's what we're supposed to be doing. So it, it, again, it helps. It helps out a a so called big team, <coughs> and yet we've got a timetable for Everton and Forest, so, and it all has to happen this season. Why does it all have to happen this season? And Man City doesn't. Well, the difference. Well, well they've told. Yeah. Well, they've told them when they're, they're prepared to to do it. City, mm. that's the difference. Everton, Everton and Forest should have just gone. Yeah, we're not doing. 
we'll we'll tell you when we're prepared to sit down with you. It won't be this season. So, but then the way that Chelsea and Spur, uh, Chelsea and, and City have told them what's happening, um, the, the smaller clubs in in Richard's eyes uh, aren't allowed to do that. So. It's a bit of a mad one. Manchester United, anyway, are interested in Joshua Zerxi uh, and Ronald Araujo, um, according to reports today. But Araujo will be a summer. Um, sorry, Zerxi will be a summer transfer for Manchester United, apparently. But uh, Araujo doesn't want to leave this window either, but Barca have played £69 million price tag on him. Can't see United spending that the moment but who knows who knows what will happen there it is quite quiet but uh, Everton Crystal Palace remain interested in Calvin Phillips on loan mm. Juventus like him as well um, he ain't coming to Everton no. he ain't coming to Palace no. No. <laughs> and this is a mad one I've seen Aston Villa's Colombian striker John Duran could move on loan to Chelsea for the rest of the season Chelsea is short up front, he's got just over eight, well, he's got 18 months left on a deal. Um, I can't know, I'm gonna leave it in that long, haven't he? No, sorry, he's had a year left of filler and he hasn't won the trust of Emily, so they're gonna let him go to Chelsea. I don't see why they do that personally. They're still involved in Europe as well, aren't that Sky report and that, but I, I can't see that. But might do it now. I know they will link with Jocker as yeah. Uh, Aston Villa have agreed a €9 million Euro deal to sign Red Star Belgrade right-back Costa Nedlajovic. Um, he come on as a sub in both games against RB Leipzig and then started against Young Boys and Manchester City. Villa want to the right-back, but they want a winger as well. Uh, Crystal Palace are interested in Daniel Munoz, South American. Um, he's Colombia's first choice right back. He's playing for Genk, and he's attacking right and attacking right back. But obviously, it's not a lot. Atman daily because because no one wants to spend any money mm -hmm. because they don't want to get into that's, trouble. Yeah, that's terrifying. Simple as that. With, with that, it's crazy, isn't it? It is a little bit crazy. But uh, Brentford are among the clubs interested in Norwich's uh, Jonathan Rowe, the left winger. Um, Rowe is being tracked by Spurs and Villa as well. Which is a bit... A bit of a... Uh, he's got a few clubs after him, which is fair play to him. Um, Obviously, Ratcliffe's in at United now, isn't he? He's trying to make his presence known as he tries to turn them around. Uh, Hannibal Medsbury is joining Sevilla. They uh, played on the heartstrings of him because he said, apparently, sporting director, because he said he'd join them. But United wants him to go to Everton. But he has gone to Sevilla. Um, Kefir says, uh, gutted for Josie. It's a tough league. It's hard to do well there with the likes of Inter, Napoli, Juventus and Milan. Uh, but the Roma team from the early 2000s were amazing. Um... DP would like uh, Masters Hard Drive to be investigated. Um, G Max says Josie for Newcastle. He'd take them to the next level. He's really though. I think people are just looking at the people. I don't think just... he really would. But... Mm. Uh, Kefir says think I think it's only a matter of time for Eddie Howe. He reminds me of when Mark Hughes was at City. And they got taken over. Yeah, I mean there is that. There is definitely something there something about taking. You have managers who get you to a certain level, and then you have to kick on. Mm. There is definitely a bit of that. Um, I just don't know whether I don't believe Yo Jose truly is the person to take them to the next level. Mm. I really don't. Um, Potter would be more of a more of a shout. Mm, possibly. Uh, Mark Doyle says, how can little Dickie Masters describe Nottingham Forest? They've won two European Cups and Everton nine times English champions and being ever present, you know, present in the top tier longer of football longer than any other club, small clubs. I just, I don't think you should be calling anybody a small No, club. no. I just, I don't, no. I, I don't take it as a personal slant on Everton. 
Shouldn't be I don't damaging your old brand. Anybody who's more club, yeah. I don't. I just Crazy. if you're in charge or something, you know it's. You want to talk it up? About, you know, it's a, it's a, it was a imagine ten. running a company and like talking about the small people. Yeah, you know, you know, every surely every employee, just in a PR way, is is as important as the next one. Mm, absolutely, Emma says it uh, crazy. They are one of the richest clubs in the world, Newcastle. Rules say they can't buy anyone and possibly have to sell to keep them out of trouble with FFP. Yeah, it's, it is mad. Uh, JS says, lads, what are the odds of government regulation coming to the Premier League? I'd say they've gone up I don't level think it's gov- I think we've got to be careful when we say government regulation. Yeah, an independent up, regulator. FIFA, just it's not allowed. You're not at the minute a government gets involved with any kind of football federation, the football federation is it happened. It's happened quite a few times in like Africa, hasn't it? Mm-hmm. It's an independent regulator. Mm-hmm. Like we have independent regulators for your water, your gas, your, you know, your everything. Football is seen as such a huge industry mm. in this country, and you know, such an integral part. Football is not a pastime; it's an integral part of this of this mm. of the fabric of this country. You know, it 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 can be the main story on the news yeah. all the time. You know, it, it is such a economically it's such a huge thing, and it has to be looked upon. That major decisions are made, whether it be whether it's to do with like you know, even the other day I was seeing about Wrexham. Wrexham got permission to finally got permission to build in the new stand, stand. Yeah. like even that is like a huge deal for you know the local the local council it went to it went to government we know mm. with our with our building our ground that had to go to government and yeah, to be signed yeah. off these are we 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 they are huge things for the um the communities that they're based in and and what 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 they give back so to have somebody like him literally pulling the strings of mm-hmm. of the or the premier league there has to be someone who's independent of everybody that can that can look at these situations and and t- you know and that's down that's ticketing that's travel that's whether you can change kickoff times mm-hmm. you know we as the fan have been forgotten in all this and an independent regular regulator we need to be able to go to someone because we're 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 go like you know if you if you, I don't know you, you you find that Everton are playing on this date and then two weeks before, Premier League say, oh we're changing the date. Mm. Mm. Well, who do you go to? You go to the very people who change the yeah, date. Of course, yeah. You go to the very people to change the date to say, I'm gone. I have got travel and all this booked. Mm. Well, at least with an independent regulator, you mm. you can go to them and go. Yeah. This, you know, to ask about it, it. Yeah. about the mark and their own homework. Yeah. That's why it needs changing. And to your Liverpool fan says, afternoon, lads. I've always said there's only four actual big clubs in the league: United, Liverpool, Arsenal, and Everton. Forget about the oil clubs. Um, yeah, but they, you know, I know I understand it all changes, and I just don't understand why he would. I'm not even. You know what, mate? Honest, I think the pair of us, and I think not even. That bothered that he's you know he's called it. It's laughable what he said about mm. Everton because it is. It's just laughable. It shows a huge um, lack of self awareness from the fella. Mm. But the fact he's saying that as a brand CEO about one of its members, I just find. Oh, sorry, about two of its members. I find that incredible from a PR perspective. I do. I absolutely find. So who were the astonishing? Who, so who were the big clubs? Who well, and how have you? De- and how? No, but who are they? And how mm. have you defined they're the big clubs? Mm. Are they the clubs that? wanted to break away so how do you define who the big clubs are mm-hmm. and do the big clubs change do they change season by season well thing he said this remember dean smith when he's villa manager when they talked about uh he was saying about the big clubs the sky six and i remember it when he was in and he went everton were a huge club when i was growing up so he was like everton want and um, you know we're one of the big clubs so why aren't everton in it now or why aren't so, villa but is it change? is it big and is it small is it is it are the is it large, medium, small, <laughs> small, <laughs> tiny? How we define and what? Why? But why, nobody should be doing that anyway. Like that's you said saying. before, it should, why, not, it should not. Why be are thing. you? Why do you already have that in your head? Why have you already defined mm. that some clubs are bigger than others? Yeah. And that that they they the things that, that that's worrying. But that's, that's what I'm saying. CEO, the things it? that you get you could get ripped apart on mm. about uh, someone could say. Well, I just find, how I have you defined what is a small club? Yeah, I haven't had a small club. 
you know, people mm-hmm. who turn up every week, the 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 people who turn up, you know, the the, the what we sell out are away. That mm-hmm. we're not a small club. Yeah, um, crazy. It's it's mad. Uh, Anthony says, has anybody else thought this? Why haven't City faced any sort of punishment and been made to appeal it like Everton have? Surely, if they know City are guilty, they should have been punished now rather than later. Well, they don't know City. Mm. They don't know City are guilty because, and they, because again, that's that's preempting an independent commission. Mm. But surely, if a date has been set, it should be publicly known. It's as simple as that. And then, and and the whole reason for me why they why they aren't is because it's clearly not this season. Mm. Because the minute it's not this season, they everyone will say. Everton and Forest are being punished. This Everton are being punished twice mm-hmm. in one season, which is <clears throat> by the by. Because maybe if we've been punished in another season, we could have been relegated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you talk about Manchester City, the minute you say they keep on hammering this home, and they're clearly telling the journalists this, by the way, it's not the same. They're not the same. They are the same. If I go to, if I'm in court, if I'm in court over shoplifting, I'm still in court. If Baz goes because he murdered someone, he's still in court. Mm. They are different, but Why they are I the same. Even the worst one. They are the same, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still get a jury, mm. and we still get a the judge, opportunity to defend yourself. And you still we? have, you know, the point. If you want to say, if you want to say it, they're different because it's all these charges and it's going to take dead, dead long mm. to blah blah blah. But you've now got a date, and it should and be in the it should, be, it should be in the public domain. It should be in the public domain. Mm. But the reason it's not is because clearly it isn't this season. Mm. And the minute if he said it wasn't this season, people, people will go on that. Liverpool fans, I'd be like, so what you're saying is you know when the date is. You could have done it this season because you've got a date. So therefore, everything else must be sorted. Mm. You've got a date. It should be this season. They should be punished this season. And therefore, if they were to get points deduction, that would aid Liverpool winning the league or Arsenal or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they're not. And that's why you're not telling. That's simply why they're not telling oh, that's us. That's what it is, yeah. And it brings, it br- again, it brings in... It, 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 by telling us, it opens the door. It's a joke. Um, Rondon the Legend says, smash the likes. Uh, Brian, it, it's a cover on the laptop, blue, which makes it look tremendous. Um, Emma says, where there's money and power, there is corruption. Just hope these MPs don't fold. Matthew Ranson says, teams like Forrest come to the Premier League are only in it for two years. Came in with a small squad and like any team, tried to catch other teams and establish themselves as a Prem team by spending. It's 500 million for other clubs. Yeah, well, that's it, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. They shouldn't, they certainly shouldn't be given a points deduction for it. But I, don't know. I just think it's nonsense. I just think it's absolutely nonsense. Um SR says they should keep PSR in place, but if you have an owner that can afford to spend more, they can spend the same amount as the club with the highest PSR. That would help others. Yeah, but the PSR, is, it's got to be redone, though, hasn't it? Because it's already created a gulf. Like, when Everton were taken over by Machiri, and obviously we would get, we had sponsors and stuff, we wanted to spend a lot more money than we were allowed to, so we eventually stood still. And then, because of the rules, we've had to backtrack and sell all our assets. If it'd have been, if it'd have been like you're saying, where you can still spend money to catch them, Everton would have done it. Villa would do it. Newcastle would do it now. But you're still creating a gulf between others. It, it, the reality is, it should be balanced up more for everybody. So, like a wage cap, really, that's what it should be. Like a, a, a wage cap that's the same for from Luton to. Manchester City, really, if you wanted to do it in a purely fair way, but no one's ever going to vote for that. It's the way it is. Um, Papa Stingray says, I'm not a City hater, but when Tevez did the West Ham to City thing, I was happy for them, thinking back then, why West Ham took the punishment, but Man City went on their way. Hmm. Abigail says, how, PS, how can PSR stay the same for 10 years, especially when inflation rises and falls by big amounts? Hmm? Matthew says, the rules change in August, but it's, there's a little bit of um, 
Let your CD come fire. There's a little bit of up and down with that. Some are saying he do, some are saying he don't. Ned will find the clip. He's got, he's got the, he's mm. got all of it there. Kafir says taking points away could cripple teams. It's if they end up going down. Absolutely. James says, would Spurs have failed PSR if they changed the rules over the finance of the stadium halfway through building it? I don't know, to be honest, mate. I honestly don't know. I don't know how Spurs had, had done it. Uh, Emma wants them, this is why she wants them to leave um, and go off to a Super League. It's already here. Currently, Premier League currently has two separate league. Yeah. Go on, bring John in. I just... I don't know the absolute detail around Tottenham, but if you recall, Tottenham fundamentally borrowed the money to build the stadium. Therefore, it was crystal yeah, clear money, that any yeah. interest was yeah. to do with the stadium. But John, just on on Everton, and I know we've you know done it, but Everton didn't just borrow the money because they didn't want to. Well, Farad Mashiri didn't want to apparently saddle a club with a big debt year on year so he thought he'd fund it par funder himself well he's turned it out that he's funded it majority yeah, exactly he, yeah. you know but but they, those costs have obviously are, are on ever now in terms of the psr and i guess when he started to fund it himself he, he wasn't expecting to lose not only a usm sponsorship of 30 million a year but also 240 million in name and rights which had been agreed which would have paid for maybe or almost half of the stadium, just a bit less. So that's a huge hole in anyone's books. Well, there's a, there's a fundamental flaw, as we know, and the, the, the current PSR clearly is not fit for purpose, mm. you know, and it's demonstrated by that, by whether Masters ducks and dives and there's debate about when its replacement comes into force, yeah. they acknowledge that Basically, the first club, Everton, that they've chosen to use these rules against have exposed so many flaws in it, they're rewriting it, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, and part of the narrative or, or the judgment by the, the King's Council, who, who saw Everton's uh, independent commission, as the Premier League like it to be called, was fundamentally, well, you should have foreseen a war, you should have foreseen, you know, a worldwide yeah. pandemic. Yeah. These are normal business, you know, bumps in the road. Mm -hmm. and, and I think anyone who's spent any time in business knows that when you're looking and projecting forward, you make assumptions about what you think is going to happen. They become risks. Mm -hmm. And if you take crazy risks, you deserve everything that's coming to you. If you take calculated risks and you get it wrong, that's life, isn't it? Yeah. But who's going to forecast that a worldwide pandemic and a war are going to happen at exactly the same time that you're building your first new stadium for more than a hundred years. It's yeah. madness, total madness. And we've talked on this channel many times, on, particularly on MTAG and the like, because it's about all clubs, yeah? Mm. And the reality is owners are being punished for investing in their business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for Richard Masters, the soon to be ex-chief of the Premier League, mm to refer to some of his shareholders as small. Yeah. By implication, he's saying some of them are not small and they're the people that I listen to. Yeah. Well, the last time I checked, all 20 shareholders were equal shareholders in the business. Yeah. So, frankly, the 14 who one assumes are the small should get rid of Mr. Masters. And if any of the six want to keep him, we all know why. Mm -hmm. He's destroying the brand every time he opens his mouth, right? Yeah. He really is. Um, but, but Tottenham built a hugely expensive stadium funded by debt. Mm. Farhad Mashiri, at the moment, the Everton Stadium's got about £100 million that needs to be spent for it to be completed. And we haven't borrowed any money, according to the Premier League, directly for the stadium. Mm. But we have borrowed money to run the business because we're building a stadium. Yeah. And that's where the international accounting standards should come to our, our I'm an Everton fan, mm. come to, to our aid if we present the case and the appeal better. But I think we're losing sight here. I think your message, and Ped's done the same, and mine's the same, a points deduction for these transgressions, not just Everton's, Nottingham no. Forest's, yeah. is totally and utterly wrong. Yeah, to the disgrace. Point I've said before, reduce the squad size. If you really want to, people might go, it doesn't matter, well, it will. If you, if you say your squad's 21 man instead of 25, it'll make a difference. It means you've got to use under 21 players. Give them a, tra a transfer ban. If you, tra if you do it again, 
transfer ban doubles. So you, the club yeah. knows. Point taking points off teams that have won the points. So Forrest have just beat United in a hard fought game at the City ground, didn't they? Did they beat them? Or did they draw? No, he beat them, didn't he? Beat them 2 1. At Old Trafford, and, wasn't and, it? No, no, it was at the City was ground. It? And now you're saying that, that that win probably won't count for anything. Yeah. Because, you know, they went up to Newcastle and won 3 1. Well, great that's result. Won away, yeah. Great result. So that doesn't count now because we're taking it off you. They went up to a team who was flying it and they beat them 3 1. Haven't won an away game for a while. And you're saying, nah, nah, it doesn't count that anymore. This chief exec. Nonsense. This chief exec this morning mm. has talked about transparency yeah. and that they are transparent. Yeah. And then as part of his exhibit of transparency, he talks about the details of a of a an American company going through a fit and proper owner's test. Mm. And he basically says, we haven't liked the answers. Yeah. That's transparency perhaps he shouldn't have given, mm. right? Meanwhile, transparency he should have given, he should give mm. about when 115 charges against one of the shareholders of the Premier League, Manchester City, mm. he says, oh, I know what the date is, but I'm not telling you. Yeah. It's so transparent mm. that he's got bias, it's not true. Yeah, to the And if you're not inside his little comfort blankets of the ones he likes, mm. and who knows how many are in it, whether it might not be six, you know, it might only be two, it might only be three. Mm. But the point is, there's an institution there called the Premier League whose chief exec clearly thinks that some of his shareholders are more important than the others, even though they've all got equal shares. Yeah. No, it's, great. It's, it's absolutely mad, right? Uh, Rod said, how good would Brighton have been if they were allowed to keep the players? Yeah. Uh, Emma says, it's true, though, the Premier League pulling strings who, where and when clubs have to sell their top players and the six get them at a discount. Mm. Yeah, it, it is crazy. Um, Albar says, the Prem is a limited company with six owners in company's house under the 02719699. Masters being the chief executive in 2022, the turnover was three point one one. Is that what three point one billion is that, and a profit of three hundred and thirty one million, or it's three point one trillion, and the profit stay in thirty one billion. Whichever way you look at it, it's a lot of money. Um, here, uh, Matthew Ferenczi says manipulation to keep the power structure in place. Um. Rod Ross says, I'm no lover of triple seven, but his comments today broke commercial in confidence and effectively reduced the worth of Everton. Mm. Uh, GMAC says, Man City will tell him when they meet. Uh, it's supposed to be October 2025, isn't it? For a decision. Mm. Yeah. Um, Sean says... Uh, Dom to West Ham. What are your thoughts, lads? <laughs> if they've got the money and you want to buy him, in you come. I can't see it happening, but that's that's what it is. Uh, Michael Taylor thinks uh, Jose to Saudi. It's written all over it. Jester thinks he'll come back to the Premier League. Mm, we'll see. Uh, Jester also thinks Master should publicly apologise. Can't say that about clubs. Um. It's bang out of order. Daniel, we're not heading, we're not hating on Tottenham. Yeah. No, absolutely not. No one's hating on Spurs here. We were talking about the, the stadium. No one's hating on Spurs whatsoever. Spurs, unfortunately, are uh, tagged into that six because they wanted to go to the Super League. Listen, if Everton had been included, maybe Everton, we wouldn't have wanted them. I'm not saying you or King Hoddle would have wanted to go. We certainly wouldn't have wanted to go as Evertonians, but I'm I'm not convinced I can sit here and go, our owners would have said no if you're getting 450 million a season. But it was still for football, was was bollocks, wasn't it? Um, Tottenham, we've said before, Spurs have done. Is this from you before saying, what have they won? Yeah, but they haven't won anything. Yeah. What we're saying is for they've, a been, while. they've been ranked correctly under Daniel Levy in terms of like what they've brought in. They've not spent. full stop. They've won three, three and league they've, titles in their history. And they've done well. But I think what Ped was saying... Commercially, they're a big club, yeah. but... But if they'd have spent a bit more, they might have actually had trophies to show for it, mate. But then, like I said before, they haven't failed PSR after the right in there. Um, Rod says no one's going for Spurs 
I'm not bothered about you, but what we do care is the consistency of rules applied for all clubs. Christopher Eden, this is a great point. Uh, it's a shame social media has corrupted fan rivalry so much. If this was happened to any other team, I'd be fuming because it's wrong. We're here supporting Forest, but rival fans are gloating. Yeah, but they're uneducated fans, aren't they? Because they're just listening to idiot journalists. Not all journalists, but some of them. They're not actually looking and going, well, what are the numbers here? Because if anyone with, like, three brain cells would look at Everton and go, right, what's happened with the squad? Oh, yeah, they kept selling the best players, and that's why. Everton went from a team challenging for Europe to a team trying to stay up for a reason because they kept selling the best players and the creative players. It wasn't like Everton's team that was challenging for the European spot was Everton's team that was fighting to stay up, was it? Go and look at how much cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting they've been doing just to stay on the, the side of this with the Premier League guide and Everton go, nope, you can't sign him, you can't sign him, you can't sign him, which would have kept Everton way away from the bottom three would have made them more money. So Everton went, okay, what can we do? The Premier League, if you do this, do this, like they have with Forrest, sell him, and we're going to do it anyway, even though you've done what we told you to do. There's the difference. Um, where are we here? Spare, Christopher says, Spurs are funding their stadium one way, Everton have done another, and in hindsight, maybe Spurs was better, but that's not slagging Spurs off. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, just to, the they are we wanted to do ours like that, but yeah, but we made a decision based on interest rates. But those interest rates are much lower than what it is now, so we'd have been better doing it that way, and we wouldn't have failed PSR. But we we done it thinking that, or well, maybe they did it thinking it was a better way the way we did it at the time. Don't forget, this was before the pandemic and before when we had um, sponsors with money, so we knew what the money was, and that was all pulled out from under us. But we were too far down the road with it, saying, we'll do it our way then, so we're not saddling the club with this other debt. When, ironically, now, saddling the club with that debt would have actually been healthier for Everton. So, um, Forest fans were gloating not too long ago. I know they were, I know they were, but that doesn't mean we... That doesn't mean that... Well, I'm not gloating. I, I still... Like I've said at the time. Yeah, we all looked and went, our Forest signing all these players. Mm. It's going to come back and bite them. We knew. We knew because of the rules. It was why when I was on the overlap, I was arguing with Paul Scholes when he was telling me Newcastle could spend 500 million every transfer window. <laughs> and I was like, have you not seen the rules? They can't. He couldn't get his head around it. He couldn't get his head around it. And lots of fans are like this because they don't want it. They just see headlines and go, oh, yeah, yeah. Now, Forest fans... Loads, Will, and we've got a, a mate who's a Forest fan, Greg. They, some of them seen it coming. Other ones won't off because they, until them rules actually come into your line of sight, you just go and, and you follow everything else, don't you? Right, last couple. Um, Daniel says, don't get me wrong, I'm with you 100%. Premier League is screwing you over and I completely understand you're being pissed off. Uh, Christopher said, as I said earlier on Toffee TV feed, but I'll make the same point. I might be being too optimistic, but I do have a lot of faith in this super silk Casey to fix a lot of this. Yeah, listen, Everton have gone for a, a big KC, and if there is any good, he'll be able to pick holes in what, what is there. But again, he's advised as well. Um, I still think with the double jeopardy thing, I don't think Everton will get an extra points deduction, but who knows? Uh, Gary Waters, Josie to MLS. Be interesting. Uh, Tony Miguel, great name, says, uh, this rule, let's not forget, was aimed by these people at per perhaps only ostensibly protecting clubs from financial demise and to preserve sustainability. It was never meant to be used for harsh sanctions to be imposed and defeat the object of the rule. The first inquiry, although not a court of law, is an administrative process and is still subject to principles of natural justice, must be fair and based on legal principles. Any sanction imposed must be proportionate and fair and should not be excessive in order to achieve the intended outcome. Bearing in mind, that's what it is. Everton's cooperation with the Premier League as well as the Commission and admissions made were clearly ignored as additional mitigating factors. With the second charge, double jeopardy clearly arises for years two and three of the period. In England, administrative decisions that are made in error 
are subject to judicial, judicial review. The Premier League have proven they're incapable of self-regulating in a fair and just manner. Despite their appointments of an independent commission, other clubs who refuse to cooperate may very well be rewarded by the delay caused by their non-cooperation when the rules are changed. The interest of supporters are not protected by any law or contractual terms, as most are not shareholders and do not even have the slight protection as minority shareholders. Supporters obviously do have a vested interest in their clubs. It's surely time for intervention and a fully independent regulatory uh, regulation of the Premier League. Well said, Tony. Right, make sure you like and subscribe. That is us done. Thank you very much, everyone who's joined us today. We are going now. Take it easy. See you later.